Now, a lot of people have said that the Half-Blood Prince film was pretty much everyone's least favorite film in the series to all Harry Potter fans of age, much more likely the Goblet of Fire. So today's video, I'm going to discuss why the sixth film in the series, The Half-Blood Prince, is pretty much a better film than The Order of the Phoenix. Before we do, make sure you hit that like button and make sure to keep comments positive for my videos. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay notified for more videos that are going to be uploaded soon enough. Now let's get started. A lot of people said that the Half-Blood Prince book was their favorite book in the series and said that the film was pretty much the film they enjoy the least. And because of all this, a lot of people have said that it's way more worse than Goblet of Fire as they mentioned. But even so, a lot of people said that they really liked the opening scene. Because looking at the book, it starts off with the Buggles' point of view of the Prime Minister. And we see that he's seeing all strange things happening, like deaths, freak storms, and most of all, a bridge falling down. And the film brilliantly did was show the scene in more an action-packed way, as it showed some previous events of Order of the Phoenix, seeing the Dark Mark, we're introduced to Greyback, and all the other type of stuff. And then it gets to the point where the scene cuts the train and gets their people's attention. Instead of Harry being at the Dursleys, they have Harry be in a subway station, and he addressed the fact that he spent his whole summer there, and I'm glad that they were able to cut the Dursleys like the Goblet of Fire did. However, the one thing that people seem to not like the most is Harry asking this muggle girl out. And this wasn't even in the book. And not that it's a huge problem with it. And mostly because this film has some different tendencies to add random scenes that weren't in the book. The added scene is by far the worst, is the borough attack over Christmas break. This is nothing but filler. It also wasn't in the book, and it adds no sense to the story otherwise. But I'm very glad that they did incorporate some things. We have Lupin since, and later see Greyback, since Greyback was the one that made him a werewolf when he was a child. We have Bellatrix see Harry for the very first time, as she was the one where she killed his godfather. And most importantly, we see the Weasley's house get burned down. And because it wasn't in the book, I would rather see another Tom Riddle scene than this. I think the way that people say it's their least favorite is the way the movie is approached. They approached this movie as if it were a comedy, and more specifically, they saw it as romantic comedy. And because of this, I remembered seeing this movie in theaters at a concert, and while watching, I was surprised upon all of this, and I was very glad that they did a good job of blending with the comedy with the darkness. However, there are some things that I want to discuss that doesn't belong with comedy. Most notably the scene where Ron gets poisoned. This is a serious scene where he almost dies. But the suspense is ruined when they tend to throw in a comedic line afterwards. These girls, they're gonna kill me. This line was not in the book. Because of this, the chapter of Birthday Surprises ended perfectly on this note, saying this. Ron gave a great shudder, a rattling gasp, and his body became limp and still. The film could have easily matched the same scene. Just have Ron on the ground, then cut to the hospital wing, because then we're still on the edge of our seat wondering if Ron will be okay. But by adding this line that cuts away all sense of panic and suspense, ruining the scene for me. And I literally remember sitting in the theater and hearing people laughing about that. Anyways, back to the review. Lots of people seem to really not be a huge fan of the movie because of the comedy and stuff. By that, I was pleasantly surprised of making the filmmakers doing a good job with blending with the romantic comedy and stuff. And yes, there is some relationship drama in the book, but the film is quite the opposite, which I don't blame really well. And the reason why is because the film really add drama to this film, like having McLagan be interested in Hermione from the start. Whereas in the book, he just agrees to go to Slughorn's Christmas party with her. He was never interested in her before that. And even so, many people think that the worst couple in this film is Ginny and Harry's relationship. I have some thoughts about this, but this might get people in the comments fighting at me, but let's keep them positive. I like Harry and Ginny's relationship in the movies, just like in the books. And because of that, they think their relationship was more handled better in the books more than the movies, thinking that it's out of nowhere romance and stuff like that. It's true that the film did notice that Harry has feelings for Ginny, like, did came out of nowhere, but 
in the book, it was a slow progression. And even so, Ginny is this beautiful, sought-after girl. And it said over and over again that she's really pretty, even by the Slytherins. And even so, the relationship was nailed pretty well. But still, lots of people seem to think their relationship in the movies is way more worse. Because even if I read the book first before seeing the movie, I would feel the same way. But still, I like Ginny in the book, especially in the movies. And I like the relationship with Ginny and Harry in the films. Now, lots of people noticed that this film disappointed so many people because the way of how much they cut of Voldemort's past. In the book, we've seen six memories of how Voldemort turned the way he is. The reason why he was able to be he, the most iconic villain in the whole series, as we've seen his cold, calculating, and cruel ways. In the movie, though, they've only showed two out of the six, and it's fine if they cut it, and I was a bit disappointed that they cut all of them because, as I said, they focus too much on the relationships. One of the things that really surprised me and fascinates me is the way that Tom Riddle was able to get his charm to get what he wants. The big example of this is him using his charm to impress Hepzibah Smith to get Salazar Slytherin's locket and Hufflepuff's cup. That was a really interesting scene to see in the book. And throughout each lesson that Dumbledore taught Harry, he learns throughout Voldemort's past about Horcruxes. These are objects that Voldemort has kept his soul within. And even so, they really surprise me and fascinates me more than anything in the Harry Potter series. Slughorn and Dumbledore were perfectly cast in this film. However, most people seem to think that they don't like Dumbledore asking Harry about his relationship with Hermione in this scene. What about your activities outside the classroom? Sir? Well, I notice you spend a great deal of time with Miss Granger. I can't help wondering if... Oh, no, no. I know that this is something that Dumbledore from the books would never do. But in the end, I was with him, saying that he was curious and was just joking. As for Slughorn in the movie, they think the story about Slughorn telling Harry about Lily and the fish was not a good thing in the movie, but said that they prefer the book version, where Harry tells the excruciating detail about his parents' death, and asks Slughorn why he wouldn't want to help take down the person who killed Lily. But even so, I think both the book and the movie version were pretty well done. But with Slughorn, with Slughorn's voice breaking in the movie scene, I get chills and the goosebumps. Same for the book version. Since I've gone over what people think of why they despise the movie, I think the way that this film did way more better than The Order of the Phoenix, like I said, handles the comedy in this movie. However, one of the things that this film did perfectly well done and well thought out is repeating the same songs from the previous movie. However, they wanted to show it in a more different way. Because of that, I love how they perfectly rhyme the films with Quidditch, much like in The Prisoner of Azkaban. And even so, all the things were perfectly well nailed. Overall, many people said that this film is way more better than The Goblet of Fire, as it was their least favorite. But even so, The Hapless Prince did perfectly well with adapting the book to a nice romantic comedy in this movie. But even so, lots of people seem to enjoy the book the most and enjoy the film the least. And even so, this movie dealt way more things in The Order of the Phoenix than it did, and David Yates did a much better job with that.